There's still a chance Dale Jr. could get Junior Motorsports to the NASCAR Cup Series, a potential ban on sovereign wealth funds, plus more charter talk in private equity. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Yeah, there might still be possibly a chance for Dale Earnhardt Jr. If you're not sick of charter talk yet, well, it's really going to ramp up over the next 14 weeks, and it's really going to ramp up before the playoffs start. So strap in for basically the next four weeks here, because Adam Stern on Monday from the Sports Business Journal posted an article where he talks about how private equity and sports funds have basically been circling NASCAR in recent months like vultures, my words, not his, as they await NASCAR's decision on what the future of the charter system system is going to be. If it's going to be a long-term charter agreement, well, you can expect a lot of guys that look like Axe from that show Billions to invest a lot of money into the sport in the upcoming years, because according to Adam Stern, a lot of private equity firms have been kicking the tires on NASCAR in recent months because it's basically a low barrier of entry for them. You know, if you're looking around 20 to $40 million compared to spending a billion dollars to buy a sports team or something along those lines. So for them, there's a low cost of entry, but a potential high return as well, because charters have created this tangible asset for teams and team owners. And it's an appreciating asset at that. Unless of course you're Stuart Haas racing and put all four years on the market at the same time and quickly learn about supply and demand, which should have learned in econ 101. But I digress on that topic for now. However, as Stern goes on in his article to talk about, there is a chance that the suits and private equity could help Dale Earnhardt Jr. get Junior Motorsports to the NASCAR Cup Series. Of course, we've heard Junior talk openly about how he's not going to spend, you know, 20, 30, 40 million dollars to buy a charter. Certainly not going to buy two at that price. And then you still have to buy all the cars and staff it and everything that goes along with that. And he just does not seem interested in that capital investment. And I don't blame him, right? That's a big financial hit to take on as well. Whether or not he pays for it out of pocket or he goes and gets a, a business loan for it, still not exactly ideal. But what if a private equity firm puts up the cash for his charters? That way he has charters. Now all he has to do is buy the equipment and then he can go to the you know, NASCAR Cup Series. According to Stern, some industry executives believe that that could be a possible route for Dale Jr. to take and it's the most plausible one. Dale has talked about just purchasing a stake in a charter, you know, so it'll be whoever, you know, with Dale Earnhardt Jr. or with JRM or something along those lines. But this could change the game a little bit if he's interested in taking on investors and potentially doing a deal with some suits over in private equity. Now, I know a lot of fans are not going to be happy with the term private equity. It's a hot button topic and it, you know. Private equity, by all accounts, has not made life better in any, in, in any industry that it's gotten it. And for NASCAR to consider, you know, allowing this or, you know, the type of investment, this is always going to happen, right? We've seen it happen, too, in recent months. I mean, just a few weeks ago, Trackhouse took on a large minority investment from the Avenue Sports Fund, Mark Lassery, which... On the topic of Mark Lassery and his sports fund, um, Andrew Merstein, the former owner of Richard Petty Motorsports, basically said in this article from Adam Stern that uh, he believes that Lassery divested from the NBA, got out of the NBA, and then got into NASCAR because there's a you know higher upside for that. I think it's really just a bigger return on investment. So that's an interesting aspect to see there that I hadn't previously heard because right now the NBA is in the midst of a absolute influx of cash from their TV partners, $7 billion a year. NASCAR just got $7 billion over the course of seven years. NBA is getting that a season right now. Absolutely crazy numbers. So we've seen that happen. We, of course, saw the Harris Blitzer Sports Group last year invest into Joe Gibbs Racing. And we've seen, obviously, uh, Fenway Sports Group is invested in RFK. So there's a number of them, you know, around right now. Well, I think we're about to see a lot more. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Once again, use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have a new bra or Driven shirt on. I almost said BREAKHARD shirt. No, this is a Driven shirt. Use code BREAKHARD. Uh, I wear the sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears the sunglasses. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and maybe you can as well. So check out their website today. Uh, and on the topic of that, it's and it'll be interesting to see how NASCAR lays this out. If they allow private equity to purchase a charter outright and own one, I don't love that at all. The prices on charters are about to skyrocket, though. I can guarantee you that because now they'll be traded as they're tangible assets, but they'll be traded around and wait to see what the market does on them. But the price will definitely go up. If NASCAR only allows them to invest 25% into a charter, I think things are a lot safer at that.
you know, we'll have to wait and see how all of it's written out. But in a previous version of the charter agreement that was sent over that Adam Stern reported on, uh, there was a portion in there that noted that they could purchase a stake in a NASCAR Cup Series charter. It did not mention that they could purchase a charter outright. And I think that's probably the big sticking point. On the topic of other people that have talked about investing into the sport, Stern mentioned that the Steinbrenners and the Yankees are interested in potentially doing a partnership in NASCAR. They, of course, did a partnership with Andretti Autosport. They got Colton Herta his first win in IndyCar back when it was Harding Steinbrenner uh, in, what, 2019 at Coda. They've up until last year in 2023, were a partner over at Andretti Autosport. They helped field the uh, Devlin DeFrancesco car, as well as James Hinchcliffe as well. So they are not strangers to racing. I'm just not sure if they're NASCAR um, ready in terms of like the amount of money. It's not IndyCar. You're going to spend, spend a lot more money. And Hal Steinbrenner notoriously has pretty tight pockets now. He's not his dad. So it kind of depends on which Steinbrenner and what avenue they're looking to use NASCAR for. But you know, anytime you attach the Yankees name to something or the Steinbrenners, it garners a lot of attention, mainstream attention at that. So it won't necessarily be a bad thing for NASCAR if they do come and join, just potentially for the team that they do join because they might not want to spend said money. And then that brings us to the topic of sovereign wealth funds. If you're not familiar with the sovereign wealth fund, essentially, we'll just use the, the most famous example, of course, is the Saudi public investment fund. So it's money from the government in Saudi Arabia, and they use that money to start up live golf, invest into a Formula One team, um, you know, bring certain events to Saudi Arabia, stuff like that. So it's money that is seemingly endless at times. There's a lot of it that can go around. But in the latest charter proposal that has been sent between teams and NASCAR, NASCAR has talked about and outlined in that agreement a ban on sovereign wealth funds. And I think that is a really good step in the right direction because allowing it, that opens up Pandora's box. And I don't think that's a political road that NASCAR wants to go down. You're essentially going to have one team, maybe multiple teams, taking on blood money from another country and then you have a lot of geopolitical issues that are going to fall into that and i just do not think the juice is worth the squeeze as they say i stuttered on that but you get what i'm saying here and i think it's a good thing that they potentially have you know considered outlawing that but Listen, charters are going to be a hot topic for the next few weeks, and I think that it's really ramping up here. We saw a couple days ago that NASCAR and teams have basically agreed to uh, the TV revenue split. That part of the deal seems almost done there. Now they're focusing on a couple other issues there. So I think they're a lot closer than they previously were. Now I think it just has to work through some of the finer details like what we just talked about here with some private equity and sovereign wealth stuff. But let me know in the comments what you think about Dale Jr., Sovereign Wealth, Private Equity, anything you want to talk about, I'm here for it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.